Our next adventure with the Maui Dive Shop was aboard the world-class Ali'i Nui catamaran. Once aboard, we met with General Manager Jeff Strawn to talk about the scuba adventure that is offered at the famous Molokini Crater Dive Site. All right, welcome Cindy JR. My name's Jeff. We're going to be diving at Molokini Crater today. Have you guys ever been diving in Molokini Crater before? No, never. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Molokini Crater um, is volcanic in origin. It's commonly misconceived as being an underwater volcano. And in reality, it's not an underwater volcano. No lava ever flowed out of Molokini. Molokini Crater is as shallow as three feet deep and it's as deep as 300 feet deep. And it's everywhere in between, okay? It's a bowl. So up along the edge right here, you're gonna have the three feet deep area. On the back wall right here, you're gonna have 300 feet of depth back here. And in the center reef, which is out in this particular area, you're gonna have about 60 to 80 feet. Now today we're going to be diving an area over here called the Ininui side of Molokini Crater. It's a beautiful spot, there's tons and tons of fish, the life is really, really phenomenal. And coral in Molokini is really, really in, in very, very good shape. The state of Hawaii uh, monitors coral at different places around the state, and Molokini Crater is one of the places and it's the number one coral growth in the entire state of Hawaii. The reason for that is, is that coral needs three things to really, really thrive, okay? It needs clear water, okay? Molokini Crater, a poor day is about 100 foot of visibility, and a good day is about 150 foot of visibility. The coral needs sunlight, okay? That sunlight with the clarity of the water needs to permeate all the way down through the clear water to get to the coral. And the third thing that it, the coral needs to really grow and thrive is water movement. Molokini Crater is about three and a half miles from the closest part off of, Ma off of Maui. There's great circulation, there's great current, and there's great sunlight, and so they have just prime coral structure growing out there, okay? Um, what we're gonna do on this particular dive is we're gonna be coming in here to this H mooring right here. There's 26 moorings out of Molokini Crater. We're gonna bow and stir tie the, the boat. We're going to create a bridle off the back of the boat right here. We're going to uh, pin it in both particular directions. We're going to be working off the back of the boat right here. The boat's going to be moored in about 30, 35 feet of water. We're going to drop in. I'll show you how we're going to get off the boat in just a minute. We're going to drop in here off of the back and we're going to work really, really slowly all the way up over to this any Nui side over here. Maximum depth on this dive is going to be about 40, 50 feet right in that range. We're going to spend about 40, 45 minutes. Now there is no time limit on this particular dive and the reason we can do that is because since Molokini is a bowl and really really shallow as the dive goes on I'm going to keep bringing it up to shallower and shallower and shallower depths so you're going to be able to dive as long as you guys have air I'm going to stay with you underwater okay right. average person gets 40 to 45 minutes I've had people get an hour and a half it's it just it all she depends upon you okay <laughs> questions about how we're going to do the dive Let, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to see uh, I know you've been diving in Hawaii before. The coral structure here in Hawaii looks like this, okay? Um, some of the stuff we're going to see right here, and you may or may not realize, but one of the really, really unique things and interesting things about diving in Hawaii is that we are one of the most isolated places in the entire world for scuba diving or for anything. Hawaii is a fully 2,100 nautical miles away from anything else. So that, what that means is we have some of the rarest birds, some of the rarest plants, and some of the rarest marine life of anywhere in the world. It's one of the really, really cool things about diving in Hawaii. And in fact, 24% of all of our marine life and 18% of all of our coral here in Hawaii is what is called endemic or found nowhere else in the world other than here in Hawaii. And it's really, really a special thing. And I'll show you a lot about um, the marine life and, it is this, and point out to you some of the really unique things that are here in Hawaii. You guys know your fish very well? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> this, this tablet right here of fish are what are called butterfly fish, okay? The butterfly fish you can find in a lot of uh, cl uh, tropical climates. They're in Indonesia, they're in uh, Florida, they're in uh, Australia, that type of stuff. Whenever you see this pattern, you will see that, okay? Now, what, what reason I'm going to tell you about butterfly fish today, and we're going to see all these guys today. This is the ornate butterfly fish, the teardrop butterfly fish, the long-nosed butterfly, reticulated butterfly, the millet seed butterfly, the thread fin, and on him, 
pay attention to this little thread fin of its tail that comes right off by that false eye right there. We're going to be looking for them. The blue striped butterfly, the raccoon butterfly fish, okay? Now, all of these guys right here, of all these guys, two on this particular page are endemic, found nowhere else but in Hawaii. The millet seed butterfly and the blue striped butterfly are found nowhere else in the world other than here in Hawaii. Now, which of these guys is not like the others? This one. That guy's commonly thought of being in the butterfly fish family. It's called a Moorish Idol, okay? Um, we're gonna see it today, uh, but, but it is not in the butterfly fish family, okay? Now, a couple other things that I wanna tell you about butterfly fish is certain butterfly fish mate for life, okay? So you will see the ornates, the reticulated, the uh, a blue striped butterfly. And if you remember from your dive class, just get with your buddy right here. I'll be pointing out, I'll say, we'll see a couple of these guys. I'll say, you see those fish? That's a mated pair of, of fish that are swimming. You'll see one swimming around, and then the other one, they'll spend their whole life swimming around together. It's kind of a, a cool little romantic thing that's going on underwater, okay? Some of the other stuff we're gonna see right here. Octopus, or in Hawaiian, they call this taco. Our typical taco is about that size right there. They're about a pound and a half or two pounds. They're brown in color, okay? But they can change in color and in texture, just like that. They can change from this brown color to that particular color and texture. What we wanna look for is the habitat of where the octopus is. If this coral head, if this table was a coral head, you wanna look for a little hole about this big with a pile of rubble or broken stone or coral, and the octopus is using that to hide. Masters of deception, they shoot ink, super, super smart, really, really fun to see, okay? These guys are called wrasses. This is called the bird wrasse. And you will see these around quite a bit. The other one I want to point out to is on this sheet, an endemic fish called the Hawaiian rainbow cleaner wrasse, okay? What's really, really neat about this guy, and this is my cleaner station hand signal, okay? What's really, really good about the cleaner wrasse is there's a whole symbiotic relationship where fish will come in, the cleaner wrasse will come in and pick parasites, all that kind of stuff off of it. It's, it's, a, it's a great, great situation. These guys are called Blue Stripe Snapper. It was an introduced game fish to Hawaii in 1956. Um, and you'll find these guys all over. They're going to hang out underneath the boat when we get done. The trumpet fish, there's several versions. Trumpet. Yeah, this guy's the golden trumpet, okay? We're going to see these guys underwater. These guys are called hawkfish, wow. okay? They sit up on the, on the coral and they're going to go down. The peacock grouper, okay? Peacock grouper, another introduced game fish in Hawaii. I think it was introduced in 1957 in the state. These guys are called chubs. They're going to be eating uh, uh, algae off the side of the boat. Now, urchins. Hawaii has an endemic sea urchin. It's called the red slate pencil. You're probably used to seeing urchins that look like that. But in Hawaii, we have the red slate pencil urchin. It's endemic to the state of Hawaii, and they're all going to be all over the reef. White tip reef sharks. This is the hand signal for sharks right here. We are going to see a little white tip reef shark that's out there. And they are one of the few sharks that can lay motionary, stationless, all, uh, stationary all the time. They have gills. Their gills can breathe back and forth, so they're able to lay. A lot of sharks have to swim all the time, right? Because they don't have any other way to breathe. Uh, when you say little, how little? Uh, he, he's about 30 feet long. No, he's. Oh. About He's going to be about, about this big. He's just a little pup that's laying underneath the rock out there. Okay? Uh, eels. Okay? Um, this is the hand signal for eels. Okay? Um, this is called the white mouth eel, but we've got several other eels here in Hawaii. That's the, uh, the snowflake eel, the zebra eel, and we actually have one that's kind of an amber color with a yellow stripe called the yellow margin eel that goes down, in, down its back. Okay? Turtles. We have lots and lots of green sea turtles in Hawaii. There are no what turtles in Molokini Crater. It's not the right environment. Uh, when we go on our other spots off of Turtle Point, there's turtle colonies all up and down the coast. But we're not going to see turtles today. This guy right here, if your Hawaiian is good, is called the Huma Huma Nuku Nuku Apua'a. <laughs> if your Hawaiian is less good, it's called the Hawaiian Reef Trigger Fish. It's the state fish. We're definitely going to see oh, him but today. But you have to say the Hawaiian one. Huma humu nuku nuku apua'a. Okay. Okay? They call it the, the little fish with the giant name. Okay? Uh, these guys are really good. More about some turtles. <laughs> these guys are parrot fish. We're, they're all over the reef. You may or may not realize, but that's where your beaches come from. Yeah. Parrot fish eat coral. They deposit sand. We're going to see a whole bunch of those guys out there today. Okay? All right, Sydney Gier, I have a chair right here. We're going to be diving with this gear right here. These are Scuba Pro regulators. 
that we're using. Um, it's just a basic regulator. There's not an adjustment right here. Uh, there is a purge in the center right here if you need to clear it. I realize you're both certified divers. Uh, everybody is equipped with the octopus regulator. Um, it is yellow in color right here and it's attached with that snorkel keeper. On these particular jackets, the orange button uh, inflates it. There's three ways that you can deflate air out of this jacket. You can hold it up, push the gray button. Okay. They also have the cable in here so you can just pull on it, air comes out right there. Okay, the very last way is on the back side right here, there's this little dingle ball. It's on the right hand side right here. You can drop it right here. Okay, they are weight integrated, so no need for weight belts. The weights are here. Just pull it right here. They're highly adjustable. If you want to make it looser, lift up right here. Tighter, we'll just pull all the way down. Okay, now the way that we're going to uh, get off of the boat right here, and we do have depth gauge pressure gauges. Depth gauge is set right here, pressure gauge obviously full tank, and we do have dive computers for you as well. So we'll, we'll show you how to use those in a minute. The way we're gonna get off right here is we're gonna take this big red float and we're gonna tie it between these, these cleats and it's gonna be floating out there with a descent line that goes all the way down, okay? I'm gonna help Chris get our people in the water, then we'll go ahead and get in the water. Now, I'm gonna get in the water first. The insurance guy likes it better that way, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna get it in the water first and then one of the other crew members will help you get seated up here, suited up here, and we'll walk all the way down. The easiest way to get off this boat, we'll take this gate down, is with your tank on, we're gonna walk all the way down to the bottom between this railing and that stanchion down there. And standing up during a giant stride entry, you're gonna go inboard or this way in, inside the boat. Just big jump and go right on inside the water. I'll be in the water all ready to catch you. Uh, I got lots of extra weight or all kinds of stuff um, if, you, if you need any of that kind of stuff, all right? Uh, we got a bucket here uh, for rinsing your masks. Uh, are you gonna take your GoPro yeah. camera with you underwater? So that'll be good. Got some defog right in here. All right, guys, we're, we're here with Cindy Lemos. I, Pakistani. Island Getaways TV. Cindy, what'd you think of the dive? Was it fun? The dive was probably top three, for sure. Top three I've ever dove, and I have a couple of hundred under my belt. <laughs> so how did JR like it? Was it? Did he have a good time, too? Yeah, absolutely. He had a blast. And I got to say that this boat is first class. That's one thing I really do have to say. They, they feed you, they give you towels, they do everything for you, so VIP. Super. Did they give you... Uh, um, do, do you think you got us some good GoPro footage for, for our show, Absolutely. Underwater? Yeah. We actually saw two white tip sharks. So uh, one was about three feet, the other one was about four or five feet on its own. A lot of really, really good... Monster lobster. <laughs> Monster. Monster lobster, yeah. Okay, I want to introduce our camera B operator rolling along on this trip, J.R. Breast. Um, he is here, the JR. true breast man. Yeah, the breast man. Tell us, did you get some really good underwater footage for the great, show? Great, great footage. Now, I understand you saw something of some type of a shark. Tell everybody what you think you saw down there. We saw two uh, white tip reef sharks, and then we also saw a, uh, a big lobster, and we saw a uh, spotted shrimp with that uh, lobster. We'll see you in Puerto Rico, baby. Ow! Adios. Adios.